this morning is standing in the power of God. Standing in the power of God. We can be exposed to the power of God. We can have the power of God moving on the inside of us, but, but, but he gives us the, the faith. He gives us the ability. He gives us an anointing to stand in difficult times. How many of y'all just want to escape your difficult times? Oh, next bus out here, I don't want nothing to do with this, but I'll tell you what, when you escape those difficult times and challenges and seasons, do you know what happens? They catch up to you. Eventually, they come back around. You don't just get out of it. You know, but you know, what the devil has fought so hard to grab a hold of, he's not letting go very easy. And so we, we need to be able to stand tall and to stand firm. I, I've said this a few times over the past few weeks, but when we first come into the kingdom of God, we come in as babes. Thank you. That's where the baby cries in the back. What happened? Some, there we go. But we come in as babes. But we're not called to remain that way. And when we come in, see, we're immature, and we do need to be delivered and rescued from a lot of things. But as we mature and as we grow in Christ, we walk in the walk that God has called us to. We become overcomers. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Overcomers in the Spirit. And, and some of the things we talked about that you must overcome, anybody can shout them back to me. Come on, impress Brother Allen. Yeah. Fear, that's one of them. We, have, we, we overcome our, our fear. What's another one? Unbelief. We overcome that unbelief. We need to overcome some old routines. We gotta, we gotta get past some old things so we can we can move on. Because when you when you are in Christ Jesus, you become a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new till all things are of God. Amen. If you have your Bible with you this morning, I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And and, and how this, this chapter uh, begins. Uh, the Apostle Paul is, is, is revealing some of the hidden things of the kingdom of God. Begins to talk about the law under Moses, but then begins to talk about the law of the Spirit. How the law on, under Moses, that law leads to death, but the, but the law of the Spirit leads to light. And, and so when, when, when Moses would go into the presence of God, he would spend time with the Lord. I hope somebody here spends some time with the Lord. But he would stand before the glory of God, and it would just get all over him. And when Moses would come out, his face would shine. And people would say, I can't look at, can't look at that glory. You can't. So what Moses did was he began to wear a veil so that the people would not have to look directly at the glory of God. And then he would tell them what it is that God had showed him. But we in a different day now. The veil's been removed, and now we have access to the glory of God. Amen? So let's start in verse 12. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 12. Therefore, since we have such hope, let us with great boldness of speech, unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. You see, because when, when Moses had that glory on him, it would fade after a while. And so we could look at that and realize that the glory that, that, that Moses was operating under the law was passing away. So, he said... Uh, uh, Moses put a veil over his face so the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away, but their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. Amen. But even to this day, when Moses is read, when the law is read, a veil lies on their hearts. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord... The veil is taken away. So it talks about minds being blinded, uh, uh, meaning that the mind is, com is severely constrained and that there's a veil over the heart. See, without Christ, all we're doing is we're trying to do the very best that we can with what we've got. Seemingly good people, seemingly good nature, without Christ, they're, they're operating blind. They, are, they can't see. They're, they're, there's no um, penetration of the heart. There's no transformation. None of that is there. They're still under the condemnation of sin because there's no faith in Jesus Christ. Hard place to be in. I know a lot of people, I'll say, you're a Christian. <clears throat> they say, yes, I'm a Christian, but still they leave unbelieving, still caught up in traditions, 
that do not serve the salvation, that do not serve the kingdom of God. Verse 16 again says, Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. On coming to Christ, having faith in the Son of God, in the sacred act of submission that Jesus Christ did on our behalf, we are now justified in the Lord Jesus Christ. We talked about what, what that justification is. It means that just as if I didn't do it. Just as if it was not mine, that, 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 that record has been wiped clean. People may hold stuff against you for the rest of your life, but the sins that you have committed before you came to Christ, God does not regard those sins. Amen? You're starting from a higher level, a new, a new place. How many are glad for that? How many got some sins that you're glad that, that God forgot? Don't you wish you could forget? That's right. Don't you wish the guy down the road would forget? I mean, people like Jose, don't you wish Jose would forget? So our sins are removed and remembered no more. And when that happens, the veil becomes irrelevant. You see, we no longer need protection from God's glory. Now what we need is exposure to his glory. Did you get that? That's a good place to write a note right there. We don't need protection from God's glory. We need exposure to his glory. Verse 17. Now, the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Amen? That, he, that we know God is spirit. And so where his spirit is, there's liberty. There's freedom in Christ Jesus. You are free from, from, from sin. You're, you, you've been set free from the, the chains that have held you back. And now you're free. doesn't mean you go do anything you want. It means you're free to operate in the kingdom of God. You can now move forward without guilt, without shame, without condemnation. You can now move forward in the things that God has called you to. Amen. But, but we all, with unveiled face, verse 18, Beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. That when you get, I, I, oh, I got to take this off. It's getting warm up here. Excuse me. Where was I? <laughs> When you are looking into the glory of God, how do you get to that place? I'll tell you how you get there. You all know this. you got to spend time with God. you got to spend some time in prayer. you got to spend some time in worship. Don't always be so concerned about where it is that you're getting out to, but be focused on the Lord. You know what? There's, there's times when I say, you know what? I, I, I don't want to leave because the glory of God is in the room. And I need to spend some time there. I need to hear from the Lord. I, I, I need him to, to heal some brokenness. I need him to, to, to wipe some things away. But more so, I need him to be alive where I'm dead. Amen? And so if we understand that, and that's why he says you're, you're looking in a mirror. You are being transformed. You are being changed. And so get ready for your transformation. That's what I want to tell you today. Get ready to be transformed. Get ready to become new. Pursue God and believe that he can do this inside of you, that there's something better is on the way. Amen? Tell somebody around you, something better is on the way. Here it comes. It's not the simple modification of your behavior or your ideas, but it's being transformed in nature, being sanctified. We talked about that good last week. We're going to talk about that every week. Being sanctified, being transformed, being born again, and not to stand by in the passive hope, but to, but, but to be active in faith. We don't want to be in passive hope that someday this is going to work. We want to be active in our faith. Faith has, has action. Faith has words. Faith has thoughts, that we move forward in a place of faith. You know what faith does? Faith moves mountains. That's what the Word of God tells us. A mustard seed can could, could move mountains. So we don't want to be standing by and passive hope. We want to be actively standing in the power of God. Actively standing in the power of God. You know, we, we were killing it today in worship. Y'all were saying the heart to the heaven and Jesus is the center and, and all of this. You say, you know what? This isn't something we just need to sing. This is something we need to live. You know, when we're, when we're singing a song, you know, you notice when we're singing a song, we weren't singing about Jesus, we're singing to him. We're saying, be the center, be the center. See, that's, that's worshipful prayer. That's getting us into a whole different paradigm. It's getting us above and not beneath, the head and not the tail. It's, it, it's walking in, in a blessed life with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we need to have that as our center. We need to, to, to be walking in the power of God. It's, 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 it's not what you can do. It's not my might, not my power, but by the Spirit of God. That's what, that's what the Word says. So we want to make sure we're walking in that power. There's only so much that you can do 
on your own. There's only so much that you can do by yourself. You know, how many times have we failed because we tried to do something we knew we could do, but we tried to do it without God? How many times have we succeeded because we tried to do something we knew we couldn't do, but we relied on the Lord? How many times have you been called up to do something that you knew you couldn't do? But you know if God's calling you, you can do it. I can do all things. We say, all things are possible. So how do we stand firm in the power of God? When I say stand in the power of God, it means you don't quit. When hard times come, you don't look for an easy way out. As a matter of fact, we're looking for a difficult way in. We're looking for that narrow gate, a, a, a narrow path, a difficult way that leads to life. Amen? So the first thing that we need to do is we need to find confidence in the light of the gospel. We need to find confidence in the light of the gospel. Does your testimony impact those that you come in contact with? Does the story... I don't forget about the story of your life. Does your story about Jesus impact people? Do you have a, do you have a, a strong testimony of who God is? Of who Jesus Christ is? Do you have a strong testimony of the Word of God that would compel somebody to be hungry for Jesus? How does it impact people you come into contact with? How is the testimony towards the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you a soul winner? Are you an encourager? And not just an encourager, like an attaboy. You know, I was talking about that the other day. Not just an attaboy. You'll be all right. You'll be okay. But, but an encourager in the things of God. Are you an, do you encourage people to go to the Word of God? Do you encourage people to pray? Do you, do you encourage them to come to church and to be built up and edified? Do you encourage people to come to church and not sleep in church? That's what we need to be. Our, 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 our testimony. I didn't go to, I didn't go to church to, to, to rest. I didn't go to church to sleep. I didn't come here today to preach to you so you could sleep. We came here to, to get to the deeper things, the deeper heart of the matter. Amen. Amen. Continuing on, 2 Corinthians first, uh, uh, chapter 4, starting in verse 1. He continues, Paul continues, and he says, Therefore, uh, since we have this ministry, now he says we here. I want you to know that sometimes he's talking about we, like all of us, the believers, and there's other times he's talking about we, the apostles, as he is speaking to the church at Corinth. And, and here he's talking about we, the apostles. He says, since we have this ministry, as we, as, we serve, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. You see, this is, this is what I'm talking about. This, this is a picture of, of, of sanctification. In other words, we don't operate according to worldly principle. That's what Paul's saying. He says, you've got all these people that are coming to you and, 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 and they're sharing with you a gospel, but it is not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that there is something that they are gaining from it. But Paul says, we came to, to preach Christ and him crucified, that, that we are not after material gain. We're not trying to, to build ourselves up. We're not trying to build our influence. We're not trying to do any of this. We just came to serve God and we came to serve him with everything that we have. Amen. And so, so we, we realize there's a work, a sanctification, a removal, or a denial of, of earthly things. I, I, sometimes I have a desire for earthly things. Sometimes I have, I have these other desires, but I desire more so to serve the kingdom of God. I'll leave those other things behind for the excellence of the, of, of the power and the knowledge of the Lord God. Verse 3, he says, even if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. A lot of times people aren't open to the gospel because they're just not God's. They, they just don't belong to God. They're just, they're just not at that place where they're ready to, to receive because the, the God of this world, devil, entertainment, business, all these different things have veiled the heart because they say, how can, how can I do all of these things and still get all my worldly goods? So Jesus, Jesus said you can't serve both God and mammon. Mammon's that, that God of the love of money. That's what that is. You, you can't do both unless you love one and hate the other. I, I'd, rather, I'd rather love God and hate the God of this world. And so we make a decision, a choice, and we press through. So sometimes we can enter into the kingdom of God and our heart's veiled. 
Our, our heart's completely covered, but there's something more. And, you, and, and, and so God calls, and you can feel a, a pulling and a drawing towards God. And you, So there's a, a, a war that's taking place, and Paul called it a, a war within my members, that there's something, there's something more I know that God is calling me up to. And it might take you time to get there, but if you're on the right path, praise God. Don't give up. You keep pressing on. You, you be confident in the things of God. Be confident in the light of the gospel. Paul continues in verse 5 and says, We do not preach ourselves, but, but Christ the Lord and ourselves, your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of the darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God and the face of Jesus Christ. If we understand the hard work that God is doing, if we understand the good work that has already been accomplished, if we will listen, if we will watch, if we will endure, if we will press in, that light will shine out of the darkness and that glory of God will be on you and you will be changed and you will be transformed and tomorrow will be a new day for you. Amen? I believe that God has taken us through some changes. I believe that you will not be the same next week as you are this week. And next year, you won't be the same as you are this year. But we're moving for a, a, a deeper a place of glory in him. And that's one of the things I think a lot of times people are fearful of. You know anybody that's afraid of the glory of God? You know some people are afraid to come into church? Yeah, anybody ever tell you that? I don't want to go in there. I might explode. God will hit me with a thunderbolt. They're afraid of seeing the glory of God. We never have to fear the glory of God. As long as our hearts are right, as long as we're right with God, as long as we have confessed our sin and laid all that out before him, we should, we should run to the place of God's glory and allow him to fill us and to change us and to transform. Amen? Amen. So keep, find confidence in the light of the gospel. My second point is this. Don't chase after relief, move in the power of God. Don't chase out, don't just try to, to end a problem or end or, or, or to avoid a problem. Instead, move in the power of God. When you encounter problems, when you encounter resistance, not exactly feeling the blessed life. You ever have days like this? Uh, they sound like this. Oh, come on, are you serious? God, are you, really? This is, this is what you, you have for me? You, you, see, uh, you see Jimmy over there? He's a sinner. He's blessed more than I am. You see that? That's how we feel sometimes. Not necessarily this Jimmy. <laughs> there are other Jimmys around. Bubba's, there's Joe's and Bob's. But, but we look sometimes, and that's how we feel about it. That's, that's how we feel about things. But here's the thing. So, Lord, when we're going through it, we need, Lord, I need your strength. I need your wisdom. I need your strategy. I will do whatever it is that you call me to do. Just show me what it is, and I'll do it. Amen? And so, so th that's the kind of thing. We need to be able to move in the power of God. Stop trying to move in your own power. We need uh, to, 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 to move in the power of God. We need to move in faith. And yes, faith moves mountains. Amen? How many of y'all believe greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world? And you have to be able to speak that out and believe it and to walk in this. And in and, and, and Revelation, it says that they, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And by the way, that is the word of his testimony. It's not just, well, you know, that I, was a, I, I, I needed money and God gave me money. It's not just God delivered me out of a situation. It is the testimony of, of the Son of God come to the earth. It is the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ who paid for our sins on that cross, who, who was his blood washed our sins away, that he died he went into the earth and he came back on the on the third day and now is ascended at the right hand of the father to be able to know that this this is the truth and the whole gospel beginning in genesis ending in revelation and but it still lives on in our hearts to recognize that this is the truth of the word of god the 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 the, 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 the testimony that's in your heart is i'm not the same as i once was i'm changed i'm different i don't go back to the old ways how many of y'all got some old friends who try to pull you back to the old ways that's right. But they, they're around every turn. They'll tell you everything that you used to do. And you know what? I let that be my testimony in my life. I said, you remember day back in the day. I remember when you, when you did this and that. You're not so holy. <laughs> I know I'm not so holy, but I don't do what I used to do back in the day. You're still running around the same circle after 50 years, but I'm doing something different. Amen? Amen. To be able to push in and to go after some deeper things of God. Don't chase after relief. Stop trying to escape things. Instead, embrace them knowing that God will bring you through, that God will take you through to the other side. Paul continues here in, in 2 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 7. He said, uh, but we have this treasure 
This, this, this glory of God, this knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, we have this treasure and earthen vessels that the excellence of the power might be of God and not of us. This is the sustaining power of the gospel, the sustaining power of, of God. We have this treasure, this knowledge. We have, we have the power of God and these, uh, what he calls earthen vessels. You know, if you take a look, what, what is an earthen vessel? We look at it like a, 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 a clay jar or a, a glass jar or something like that that's easily breakable. It's actually much more tender than that. It was, these are jars that are made out of crushed seashells. He says, but we have this treasure in this delicate vessel. Paul says, I know that I'm frail. I, I, I know, I know that, that people don't look at me as being strong. He says, but, but Christ is in me, and there is strength in that. And we have to believe that. No matter how weak you might feel, how tired you might feel, how dumb you might feel, it doesn't matter. What matters is the God of the universe, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, dwells within you, and that you have access to him. He has not denied you access. He might delay your access, but he has not denied you access. And we trust God in the process. Anybody here sometimes you just get hungry feeling that God has denied you? It's like you're going up, like a basketball going into the hoop, and he just, denied! <laughs> and God has, set, God, has, God has set you up. He's, he's, then God wants you to be hungry. There's no sense eating if you're not hungry. So he starts breaking some things down. He starts squeezing some things in your life. And what you have to do is you have to learn to embrace those things. Now, preacher, uh, uh, I thought it was a wonderful sermon last week. But I was, I was, I was, I was preaching out of um, Romans chapter 5, talking about how tribulation produces perseverance. Remember that? You know, and, 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 and perseverance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope will not disappoint. And, and, and then my transmission dropped out of my car. And I said, this is just a tribulation that is building my perseverance. I was, I, was, I was remarkably not upset about this. You know, I didn't throw anything. I didn't, I didn't sputter anything. I was like, well, it is what it is. And I said, you know, I'm going to embrace this. I believe God wants to spend more time with me. And if I can't get around, I'm going to have to spend more time with God. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm refusing rides. I'm, refu I'm going to walk. And somebody said, I'll lend you my car. I said, no, I'm going to walk because at least that way I can have some time and pray and spend time with the Lord and God can speak to me and I can get my steps in. Amen. <laughs> so so we, 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 we learn by what we go through. When, you know, the whole thing about when, when life hands you those lemonades, uh, lemons, you make lemonade, right? <laughs> and I don't know what you do when he hands you lemonade, but... You've you got to be able to, to stand in these things and say, Lord, is, is this you? Am I looking for a way out? Am I looking to escape this, find another way? Or is this something that God, you're, you're trying to get my attention with? Let God do some things with you, amen? amen. And he says here, so um, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence, I like that, the excellence of the power of God, may, that, the power, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. And, and don't let this be a cliche in your life. Let your tribulation, let, let faith have its perfect work in you. Amen? Trust God that he knows what he's doing. Verse 8, Paul continues and says, But we are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. We used to sing a song back in the day. Yeah, I'm stressed, my friends, persecuted, not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Yeah. Anyway. But just, just grabbing that and, and to, to look at this and realize, is Paul complaining? Are, are these words of his complaint? I'm, we're, we're, we're pressed and, and we're, 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 we're struck down. and he's, he's not complaining at all. Absolutely not. What's he doing? He's declaring victory through his tribulation. He's declaring a victory. He says, this is all the stuff that we're going through, but we're not destroyed. We're beat down, but not defeated. And we, we've not given up hope. We're, there, and, and a matter of fact, He's glorying in his tribulation right there. He's rejoicing in his tribulation. He's like, he's, he's like, I've been through worse than you, and I'm still standing. Amen. Sometimes that's what we need to go to. You know what happens a lot, Alan? Somebody says, you know, I had a really bad day. These are the five bad things that happened. And somebody goes, wow, that's nothing. You should see the seven things that I had to deal with today. And then somebody else will go, y'all ain't been through nothing, so y'all need to pity me. And so there's a, there's a competition to get to the place of pity. I think we need to compete to get to the place of victory. You know, that, that I've been through all these things and, and many of the afflictions of the righteous, but God shall deliver them out of all of them. 
and to be able to get into that word of God and say, you know, no matter what it is, I'm not going down. No matter what it is, I'm not going to quit. No matter what it is, I'm not going to give up because I've got God. I'm, not, I'm on God's side and God is on my side and, 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 and I know I can get through this thing. And so faith does not have off ramps. It keeps going north. It keeps going. It keeps going. Amen? So Paul can say all of this. And, and at the end, he says, he, he's declaring victory through tribulation. He's saying what? I'm still here. I'm still running. Amen. He said, I'm fighting the, the, the good fight. I'm finishing my course, and I'm doing it by the power of God. And that's what we need to, you won't believe what else happened to me this week. No, your answer is, I'm still here. I, I'm, I might be five minutes late, but I'm coming. You know, uh, uh, it's not going to, when the, when the devil tries to take you down, when, when he uses his little minions to try to take you down, all them other people that, that try to slow you down, all these things, all you, all you do is, is, is get back up and say, I'm still here, though. Your, your mission failed. You say, well, look at you all messed up and dragging yourself around. Says, but you failed. I'm still here. I'm still walking with the Lord. Do you know what those words mean? When you say those words to God, I'm still here, it means you can be trusted. It means that God can trust you with tribulation. God can trust you that when the, when, the, when the going gets tough, you'll still be there. God's looking for some people like that. The Bible said, what, his eyes are roaming to and fro all across the earth to show his, himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him, devoted to him. He's looking for people who have endured a, a trial, endured tribulation, and yet they still walk, yet they're still there. Amen? And so we need that. And, and, uh, and Paul says something amazing here. Let me go back and reread those two verses, 8 and 9. He says, we are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed and not in despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down and not destroyed. You see, I like that word we instead of saying I. He's saying, we. He said, I'm not in this thing by myself. A whole bunch of us are going through this. And, and, and so uh, let me tell it to you like this. Endurance, when you're going through your mess. You know, misery loves company. You've heard that before. Yeah, so does victory. So does endurance, right? Endurance is far more fulfilling when you have companions for the journey. Amen? We have few companions, but get them on the field with you. Amen? Godly encouragement is far more effective when the cheers are coming from the, 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 the field rather than just from the stands. Amen? Instead of hearing things like, you'll get through this, I'd rather hear, we'll get through this. We'll get through it together. Amen? And so someone, don't just, like, well, we'll just pray for you and hang up. It's like, no. It's like, well, let's pray together. Let's stand together through this. I'm sure we can work this thing out together. That's part of spiritual maturity. When you get past the selfishness of I, 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 and your, and your, your, your language changes instead of uh, I and me, it's us and we, and we are working through things together. We're walking by faith together. I'm talking about that spirit of encouragement. We've got to get this thing right. It's not a pat on the back and everything's going to be all right because someday some things are not all going to be all right. If everything's going to be all right for everybody, then it's not going to be all right for anybody. But if you'll stay strong with the things of God, don't quit. How's your prayer? How did you pray? Did you hear from the Lord on that? Are you sure that is God's will? What does the Word say on it? And one of the things Michelle always say. I complain, why? This, and she said, but what's the Word say? What's the Word say? So I, I learned to look at the Word first before I tell her. She doesn't stand there looking stupid. I don't know. I was like, well, this is what it says. This is what I know. Amen. We need to be able to get it. That when Paul and Silas were in the Philippian jail, they were singing together. They, they, Paul was not doing a the solo. They were singing a, a chorus. It was made for a choir. It might have been just the two of them doing a duet, but one way or another, the earth shook and the, and the gates opened. If, if Paul was doing a solo, who knows what would have happened, but that wasn't the case. Amen. You got to realize we, we, we go through some things together. You know, one of the things I hate when I'm going through things is, is I, I like to deal with things alone, but I don't like to go through them alone. Amen? Jesus knew he was going to have to face that cross. What did he do? He called the disciples together and said, we're going to have a prayer meeting. You guys wait here. You guys come with me. And then he got so far, he went on the rest of the way without them. He came back. He found them sleeping to their shame. 
You couldn't wait one hour. You couldn't stand one hour with me. Even Jesus said, I'll take some companions with me. And he, and he, and he whittled them down to those whom he felt would be the most faithful. Amen. Verse 10. Always caring about the body, in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also might be manifest in our body. In our body. By our constant dangers and sufferings, we are a kind of living death. When you're challenged by things, you feel like you're, you're dying, you're, you're going through some things. You know, part of us has to die so another part can live. Amen? We're living a reliance on Christ so that we can be a blessing to the world around us. I, I, I keep getting up and I keep standing in Christ because I want to be a blessing to the place that I'm called to. Paul's saying, that we are carrying around the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, the dying of Christ within us. He said he's doing all of this so that he could be a blessing to the church as it grows. So what does that mean uh, for us? In your case, it could be your family, it could be a church, your community, those whom you serve in the name of Jesus. Verse 11. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake that the life of Jesus also may be manifest in our mortal flesh. Leave that verse up there for a second. I want us to grab that. He says, for we who live are always delivered to death. For what reason? For Jesus' sake, right? For, for in other words, I suffer and I endure. This is Paul talking. I know this is not be for everybody, but listen to this. He's saying, I'm suffering and I'm going through all that I am, but I'm doing it for the sake of Jesus. I'm doing it, and, and you know, just, just think of the, 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 the words entomology. Think of the origins of that expression. I'm doing it for Jesus' sake, you know, and, and, and we, we, we miss it in the modern level when people, when something goes wrong, people say, oh, for Christ's sake, right? And they do, right? That's what they say. And, and, and so they, they get up, oh, for Christ's sake, and all these different things. But what if, what if we were to win this thing back? And you were to realize when you're suffering and getting ready to go through some things, that you would say, Okay, for Christ's sake. Okay, why, why, why would you do that? I'm doing it for, for Jesus' sake. Why do you minister to people who, who can't stand you and don't like you? I do it for Jesus' sake. I do it for Christ's sake. Why am I going to face this next? I'm facing it for Christ's sake. If we could just get it together and get it right, we'll move to a different level altogether. But God rewards loyalty, doesn't he? He loves it. We endure for Christ's sake. Verse 12, Paul continues, so then, life, so then death is working in us, but life in you. So death is working in us, he's saying the apostles, but life in you, the beneficiaries. And this is Paul, again, suffering with gratitude for a cause. We read through all the stuff that Paul went through and that Paul endured, all the things that Paul went through, and we should be completely glad and elated that we didn't have to do that. But he paved the way so that we could go further in our faith. Amen? So he's pointing out this suffering not to bring glory to himself, but rather to Christ for providing for them. He's bringing glory to Christ. Everything that Paul went through, he was providing for the children, for 1 Corinthians, for the, for the Corinthian church. And so he's, he's giving glory to God that all this we do because God provided for you. And so God provided us for you. That's what he's saying. Amen. So let me point this out. There's many who have gone on before you in the faith. Many who have gone on before us. And none more honorable than Jesus Christ himself. Amen? Yet many have suffered and sacrificed in the service of the Lord that we may be birthed in the Spirit and won to the kingdom of God. For this we ought to be grateful. I was going to Paul wrote to the Galatian church. You know, Paul was in, he's, he's winning that church. He's, he, he's winning people to the Lord. He's leading them, guiding them on the way, and then he moves on on his journey only to find out that people came in from behind and it started to pull people away, started to, to bring them back under the law, begin to bring them back under bondage. But they were doing it, and as they're doing it, they're, they're making profits off of this. They're making money off of it. They're, they're getting the prestige. They're getting their carnal uh, itch scratched, if you will. And so they're going through, through all of this, and then Paul comes back. He's giving them the truth. And they have to say, am, am I your enemy because I tell you the truth? That suddenly, the, all of those that he invested in, they look at him as being weak and small and, and calling him a liar? There's something more that God has for all of us. But we have to be kingdom-minded. 
We've got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We've got to spend time in the Holy Ghost. We've got to hear the things that God is speaking to us, through us, and through others to us. Amen? We've got to get there. Verse 15 says, For all these things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, will cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. That everything that we go through, if we do it right, everything that we endure for the sake of Christ, if we will do it with a good heart, with our eyes on the prize, our eyes on Jesus, it all comes back around to thanksgiving being lifted up to God, that God is glorified, and that souls are one for the kingdom of God. How many of y'all think it's time to get some more souls for the kingdom? It's time to get some more people uh, uh, focused and, and driven and moving forward towards the kingdom of God. But I want you to stand strong. Stand strong uh, in, 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 in the power of God. The power of God is with you. The power of God is in you. Don't be, don't be a quitter. Don't, don't be one who, who, who falls into the pit of self-pity. Rather, stand up and know that you are chosen, that you are called, that a lot of the things that you endure, some of it you're going to go through because it's your own mistake. Other things that you are doing, you'll go through is because God has set you up. They would use you powerfully in his kingdom. So find confidence in the light of the gospel. Don't chase after relief, but move in the power of God. Don't be a complainer. The Bible says don't complain. Don't be a complainer. Be a victor. Walk in victory. It's, it's not going to take me down. If it does, it'll, it'll be over in a minute. But we're moving on for greater things. And the third thing is this, stand strong in the power of God. Endure all things. Endure all things with the hope of eternity. Everything that you think that you deserve for your faithfulness, you will not get in this time. Some things will be rewarded in this time and in this season. But you've got to realize we're doing things with our, our focus is on eternity. That God has rewarded those who diligently seek him, who pursue him, who go after him. That we are storing up treasures in heaven. Amen. And so we've got to realize that we may not get all the rewards, everything that we want right now, but, but good things are coming, and if we don't get them now, we'll get them later. Amen. I, I, I so much look forward to that day when we get to the heaven and we start to, there's a, a, a reckoning that goes on. Maybe not the whole reckoning, but there's something out there that's good for me. Amen. There's something good that's coming my way. And so a lot of times, and I'll, I'll share this frequently, so that by faith, by faith, by faith. A lot of the things that we do by faith, we will not see it fulfilled in our lifetime. But it may be fulfilled in our children's lifetime or our grandchildren's lifetime. The very things that we pray over our family may not be seen for two or three generations should the Lord tarry. But to look with faith means it's coming. And it will come to pass. Paul continues and he says, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Somebody needs to write that scripture on the wall and put it up there and read it every single day because that, that's powerful. We don't lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. I did a funeral a few weeks ago, and I, was, I used this scripture as I was addressing the people that were there, and, to, and just to recognize it, there's some suffering we have to go through in life. Anybody doesn't believe that we have to go through some suffering? Anybody has not suffered? There'll be some suffering that we go through in life, but I'll tell you what, God has sanctified suffering. That God has made it a holy experience when we will suffer and we will endure, and he is a part of that process. Remember, my grace is sufficient for you. That's what he told the Apostle Paul. Let this thing uh, uh, come free from me. And he said, my grace is sufficient. You will endure this level of, of suffering. And he says, but, but uh, our outward man is perishing. We may have to go through some things in life where our, our outward man is, 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 is uh, perishing. But the inward man, the soul man, the spirit man, being renewed every single day. Could you imagine Paul? Think what Paul went through. Think what the early uh, apostles went through. They were beaten, they were hung, they were flayed, they were run out of cities, they lost their families and crazy things. They lost, many, many lost their lives. He said, but in all this, I'm perishing physically, but I'm being renewed in the spirit day by day by day. It means a lot more when we're living our lives daily for the Lord Jesus Christ to know that we are being renewed day by day. See, that doesn't happen for non-believers. They're being crushed inwardly and outwardly. But we're doing it with an eternal viewpoint in mind. 
verse 17. He says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. That's what it means to walk by faith. That's what it means. It's not, it's not just what I can see, what I can figure out, all the things that are right in front of me. There's some invisible things, some things that, that I have to walk by faith in order to see. There's some things that are coming down the line, and we declare them by faith. We walk it out by faith. We have the Word of God active in our lives, so we move by faith. And I'll tell you what, to, to recognize it's working together for the eternal way. The eternal way, that means it doesn't end. It doesn't end. There's, there's this, this uh, the light affliction, this, this easy affliction. Like, Pastor Dave, you don't know how bad it is for me. And I said, well, you know what? I may or may not know how bad it is for you. And I'll tell you, no matter how bad it is, it does not line up to the weight of the glory that is coming for those whose hearts are faithful to God, those, those who do not depart from the path, those who, who hold the line. And I'll tell you what, that, that, is, that is one of the greatest things that we, that we experience in our Christianity today. Some of the greatest preaching that is out there is simply do not quit. Hold the line. Hold the course. We press in. You know, I, I press in for the, for the greater things of God. And, and we talk about that, grabbing it, holding it, and, and never giving up on it. Don't give up. Understand that God is working. All these things are working out for good. The Bible says all things work out for good for those who love God and are called according to his purposes. So if we get that, we understand that in our heart, we're not going to quit, we're not going to give it up, we're not going to go away, we're going to press in for the deeper things of God. This is what God has for us. Amazing things. How, how, do, we, how do we walk in the strength of God? How do we walk in the power of God? How do we stand in the power of God? And you know what? It's easy to stand here on Sunday morning and push this out to you. The hard part is when you're really going through it when you really have to endure it, when you're really fighting that battle, to turn around and not blame God, not be upset with God, but to be able to stand in faith so all this will work out for better. Time does not heal all wounds. God does. And, and, if, and, and so we break down that worldly logic that everything will get better if you just leave it alone. No, things will get better if you have faith. Faith will carry you through, Amen. How do we do? We need to be mindful in our lives of the Lord. We need to be mindful of the things of God. We need to be mindful of the will of God. We need to be mindful of, of, of God's love and the purpose that he has for our lives. We need to bring this to remembrance. And I'll tell you, the big part of bringing this thing to remembrance is making the word of God an active part of your life every single day. Every day, getting in the word of God getting in the presence of God, getting in the, in the power of God. Be mindful of God in your lives. Amen. 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 So as we close the service today, I want to encourage you. I want you to look for the power of God in your lives. I want to encourage you. Don't quit on God. Persevering in your own strength, persevering in your own power, persevering in your own tenacity, you will fall and you will fail over and over and over and over again. But God has called you to be overcomers. Not in your own right, not in your own strength, but in the power of God. You can only go so far, you can only do but so much if you're not walking by faith, if you're not walking by the Spirit of God, if you don't take time to allow the Holy Spirit to really come inside of you and do that cleansing work in your heart and in your mind, I encourage you today, be a man and woman of God. Don't be slow, don't be lazy, don't be dull about it, even if you don't get it. Understanding that your heart might be veiled, but ask God to remove the veil. That's a cry of faith. You might feel like a failure and ask God to remove the failure. Don't ask Him to just deliver you from your problems. Ask Him to make you an overcomer. But do so on the 
matter of truth. The Word of God, the Gospel, the cross, the blood of Jesus, the death and the resurrection, the ascension, the victory that's been won for you, knowing that God has gone on ahead of you. The Lord Jesus has gone up into the heavenly places and made dwelling places for each one of us that when we pass from this earth that we will have treasures in heaven, a place in heaven. That God's got such great things for all of us. Only hold on. Only don't quit. Don't give up. Don't walk away. Don't be slow. Be quick in the things of God. Father, we love you, we adore you, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the time that we've had together this morning. My prayer, Lord, is that we would know your strength, that we would know your power, that, Lord, that we would be these earthen vessels that are filled with the excellence of the glory of God, that we would have this treasure in our lives. That, Lord, that we know that we'll be tried. We know that we will be persecuted. We know that there's times when we will suffer, Lord God. But then, Lord, that even through all of these things, you will deliver us out of every single one of them. If we just keep our, our eyes on you, we keep our eyes on Jesus, we keep, our, we keep our ear to the Holy Spirit of God, that we acknowledge that we are the, the sons of God and we wait for the Holy Spirit to give us that confirmation. That, Lord, that in this day, I pray that we do not be deceived. That we do not be taken off course to the left or to the right. That, Lord, that if there's false teaching that arises up, Lord God, you'd be quick to cast it down in our lives, Lord God, and isolate us unto yourself, oh God. That, Lord, that you would not allow the enemy to snatch us out of your hand. That, Lord, that we would not put our hope in anybody or anything apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, God, in this day and in this hour, that, Lord, that you would raise our maturity level, Lord God. That, Lord, you would help us to run this course and that you would show us who is our enemy and who is our ally and, and who is in the trenches with us, oh God. Those, Lord God, that you have sent before us and those that you will bring behind us, oh God that we would recognize what it is that you have called us to walk up to, to step up to, and that, Lord, that you would uh, speed up, that you would um, give us power in our lives to walk this victorious walk, that we would know we are saved, we are healed, we'd be hungry and desperate for you in this hour. I believe, God, that's what you want. You want us hungry and thirsty and desperate for you. Not filling up the flesh, but rather being filled in the Spirit. We thank you for healing. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you, Lord, for calling each of us. And today, in the name of Jesus, I call you blessed. I call you blessed. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our midst. We honor you in all these things. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And as we close, I just want to pray for my brother over here.